Now, another pivotal point is that the definitive meaning of the pith instructions is subsumed within the supreme state of resting imperturbably. The true nature of phenomena. The fact that manifest circumstances are free in their own place is due to the key point that naked awareness is a naturally settled state of imperturbable rest. According to the distinctive principle of this approach, what binds an ordinary person arises as the path of freedom for a yogin, for it arises from the ground of being. The great Garuda states resting imperturbably, free of obscuration, is the uncorrupted path, intangible and without parallel. Timeless awareness is the actuality of everything. It does not rely on confusion, the reification of sense objects. Responsiveness, which by nature expresses itself continuously in sense objects, is free in that these empty objects rest in their natural state, without being analysed. The key point about the freedom of self-knowing awareness is that it is not corrupted by anything. Although body, mind and afflictive emotions are natural attributes, they manifest as fetters for those who are ignorant and spiritually undeveloped.
self-knowing awareness is the natural state of rest, genuine and uncontrived. Timeless natural freedom, which nothing can destroy. Since it is free in its own place, without having to be freed, what is the use of effort? Timeless natural freedom is the very absence of any cause of being freed. Given that there are harmful actions and their negative consequences, as well as great supports of bliss, the key point of effortlessness is that these occur unsought and of their own accord. They are free of any basis so how could virtue improve anything? There is no Buddha. And who creates the fetters that bind? There is no name for, let alone the possibility of, confusion or non-recognition for anyone. Therefore, since nothing has ever been freed, freeing later on is a fallacy. When the meaning of this, the truth that is the true nature of phenomena, becomes familiar, ordinary mind is referred to as the great spectacle. The Six Expanses states, A fortunate yogin 
who meditates authentically, finds the gem that no one can find. This is of inestimable value. A person who encounters such inestimable wealth sees the vision that no one can see. This itself is self-knowing awareness, such a great spectacle. A great spectacle thus takes place in the mind. The fragmentation of the phenomenal world is swept away. Those who cut through this fragmentation hold self-knowing awareness in their hands. Spiritual people who have such appreciation awaken to Buddhahood before there is Buddhahood. And those who are capable of beholding this mandala of bliss become foremost among those who hold all mantras of awareness. The phrase, fragmentation of the phenomenal world, refers to whatever arises or manifests. Being swept away means coming to a realization of its underlying natural lucidity. Another pivotal point is that pleasure and pain blend in equal taste. If you react to two waves arising on the same body of water by accepting one and rejecting the other, you're being illogical.
similarly. It is illogical to react to states of consciousness that arise from a single awareness. Perceiving what is pleasurable as something to accept, while perceiving pain as something to eliminate. Because attachment and aversion are alike in being causes of samsara. The detailed analysis of empowerment states In that all pleasure and pain are magical expressions of awareness. How confused it is to reify them dualistically as things to accept or reject. Thus, the states of consciousness that arise due to dynamic energy of a single awareness, as pleasure or pain, good or bad, realization or the lack of it, all abide in a state of equalness, given that awareness is their true nature. That is to say, states of sensory consciousness in which one is aware of objects are equal in their underlying natural lucidity. In the very process of arising, Thoughts occur only to fade away, and so are equal, like ripples on water. The ordinary mind is bound when it is distracted by sense objects, drawing it outward. So these objects are equally binding, like chains of gold and ropes of hemp. Since all of them are in actuality without basis or foundation, 
having never existed. They are equal in the final analysis. Since they end up vanishing naturally without a trace, they are of equal essence in that they are naturally freed. Since they have never known existence in actuality, they are equal in being fundamentally unconditioned. Since they arise from the same ground, awareness, they are equal as a display within naturally occurring, timeless awareness. Since both objects and mind are equally definable as clear manifestations that do not truly exist. Since objects have never existed outwardly and mind has never existed inwardly. Those who realize that objects and mind are of the nature of space ensure Samatabhadra's legacy and are said to be fortunate masters of awareness, abiding on the level of the heart essence. This is because they perceive the key point and enjoy the blissful, pure realm of self-knowing awareness. The heart essence of secret states. Such is a master of sublime awareness, considered by holy ones and sublime holy ones to be their child or sibling, and so blessed by them. honored by the leaders of the world and their retinues, and abiding on the highest level, that of a master of awareness.
and the six expanses states. Awareness is self-knowing by its own force. No matter where in the 3,000-fold universe you may seek it, there is no place you will find it. Its range is that of the entire universe. In the nature of how sensory appearances manifest lies the vision that no one can see. The blissful, pure realm of self-knowing awareness. Being familiar with this, yogins are fortunate ones who directly perceive the enlightened embodiment of me, Samantha Bhadra. Their fortune, self-knowing awareness, is equal to mine, and they are free in emptiness. Those with the great fortune of being familiar with this attain the enlightened dimension which does not entail concepts. Appreciating the radiance of my responsiveness, they share equal fortune with me. They are my core and my retinue as well. This radiant, precious gem, this supreme secret of the Buddhas that no one can perceive, this I have revealed.
the responsiveness of me, Samantha Bhadra, who is without concepts, manifests in ways that are continuous. And so the source of hope for ordinary beings is this precious state of unsought rest. Though it is not the province of everyone, yogins who have realized this are, among those with realization, embodiments of victorious ones. Homage is paid with a devoted mind to these powerful masters. Whoever is aware of and realizes the mind of me, Samantha Bhadra, shares a fortune equal to that of a thousand Buddhas. Fortunate spiritual individuals with dynamic aptitude maintain an unwavering state of resting in equipoise. They are masters in whom all mandalas converge. Whoever is aware of and understands things in this way encounters the significance of unsought rest. Rest. 